Alrighty, so over the last couple of weeks, I have been casting a ton of professional matches of StarCraft 2. Today, it's time to kick back, it's time to cringe a little, as it's time for a viewer-submitted game of Zerg versus Protoss. Spawning here in the bottom left-hand corner of New Repugnancy LE, and not actually spending anything just yet. What is he... Is he gonna go for an expansion at 12 supply? <sighs> Alright, this is a viewer-submitted game, alright. I guess someone got their hatchery blocked one too many times. We are looking inside of the main base of Phenomino. Phenomino? Phenomeno? That's a fun name. That's a fun name. Phenomino. I'm gonna go with Phenomino. And his opponent, spawning in the opposite corner, playing with the red Protoss probes. We have none other than Optic Boreas. Some badass nicknames today, not gonna lie. Alrighty, is it gonna be a fort? It's not. I got a feeling that in the majority of the games that I cast, so this is a Platinum League Zerg vs. Protoss, in the majority of the games that I cast, there is indeed some early game aggression, especially coming out of Protoss players. I mean, I feel like the Forge is their first structure after the Pylon is definitely uh, a fan favorite, but this time around, that's not quite the case. I guess if you go for a 12 hatch, even if you do get cannon rushed, I mean, maybe you're gonna be able to hold it a little bit easier. But the thing about going for a hatchery at 12 supply rather than at like the more standard 17, maybe 16 and Zerg versus Protoss is that you just simply lose out on so much early game economy. Zerg structures are by no means cheap, so just simply getting it at this time already cost him a couple hundred resources. But you know what? Generally speaking, right, at this level especially, there is a little bit of wiggle room. Now, of course, if you have an awesome game of StarCraft that you played yourself recently as well, you can go ahead and submit it to replays at loco.tv and maybe Motlasis will go ahead and select a game that you will submit uh, for me to go ahead and cast next as well. I want to do more of these once again. Not gonna lie though, I have casted quite a, quite a few games lately, even games that Motlasis selected, and generally speaking, the quality hasn't been amazing, okay? I've had some, some really stupid games, some really dumb games, where, you know, once again, Planetary Fortress Rushes are back in season, but Planetary Fortress Rushes, guys, above Gold League, don't really seem to do very well. So, I'm secretly hoping that this game is gonna surprise us. I, uh, I hope it's gonna be better than, uh, than some of the games that I've seen over the last couple of days. Anyways, pretty quick Metabolic Boost upgrade here for Phenomino. He's making a ton of Zerklings. Only a single Queen coming up right now, and I guess he's planning on running these links across the map, and maybe he's... He's looking to headbutt right here uh, with this Protoss player. Now, obviously, Cybercore is done. There's no tech structure or anything just yet. There's no third pylon, so it's probably going to go some there, somewhere over there. Um, but usually, we would see... There you go. What Protoss is planning to go for right about right now. And there we have the Stargate coming up. No scouting here from uh, Optic Boreas. He scouted with a single probe, but no follow-up. With, for example, an adept to figure out what is actually going on. That's a lot of Zerklings to deal with right now, though. I kind of feel like he needs to go ahead and build maybe like a shield battery. You need those shieldy boys if you're in this scenario. Um, another Stalker will be coming up as well. I kind of feel like adepts are gonna, are gonna be way better. Alright, he's gonna be able to at the very least create a, a second layer. Another layer in this wall right here. There we do have some shield batteries coming up as well, and I think eventually Optic Boreas should be able to hold this. Although, it does look like Zerk does not plan on slowing down just yet. That is just non-stop Zerklings coming across the map at this point. And with Metabolic Boost finishing up here in just a couple seconds as well, he's gonna be able to get those units across really, really quickly. Stargate is done. I don't see production just yet. I think that going for an Oracle right now is a really good idea. You could even go ahead and follow it up right now with a Void Ray, which is not a terrible suggestion, but I think Oracles are gonna be a little bit better. And even though, indeed, there is a... S oh my god, he's trying to set up another wall. It is not quite happening just yet. There's a there's a gap, man. That's a loco wall right there. The Zerklings just simply flood into the natural right now, and while the Zealot was, uh, was dreaming about, uh, I guess, better times, he did end up slicing away at a couple of these Zerklings as well. Is there still another pylon? Okay, there's another pylon right there in the back. But once again, another hole in the wall is going to allow these Zerklings to flood in. And while it seemed like Finomino wasn't going to be able to get anything done right here with the Zerkling Aras, he certainly did manage to break into the base right now. Workers are falling left and right. And all of a sudden, Optic Boreas finds himself with a terrible economy. Now, with this amount of shield batteries, though, he should be able to eventually ward this away, right? There's an Oracle finishing up here in just a little bit as well, not utilizing Chrono Boost, because, heck, who needs Chrono Boost anyway? Uh, Cybercore is going to be picked off as well, so I think this is going to be the last Stalker uh, that may be produced right now, if he wants to get another one, that is. 
All right, he's not warping in anything, but with this amount of shield batteries, right? He should be able to deflect this here eventually. And you know what, guys? If you're looking at this, right, and you're a Platinum League player yourself as well, what you should really go ahead and do, if you find yourself in a similar situation as either of these two players right now, is follow a solid build order. There's a reason why there is a so-called standard at the highest level of StarCraft. There's a reason why all of the Protoss players in Protoss vs Zerk open up with the same set of buildings pretty much every single time. I mean, I would say it's about an 80% chance or so uh, for the same, uh, for the same uh, buildings to go down in the same order every time in the same location as well. If you study a couple of pro games and you can figure out what it is they are doing, oftentimes you can find yourself in a really good scenario because you can just simply blind counter so many of these pushes. If the first Oracle came out faster, if there was the standard Adept follow-up, especially with a second gateway, you should be 100% fine. Anyways, Finomino is going to send across more and more Zerklings, and I've kind of got a feeling he uh, doesn't really have much of a follow-up plan, right? He does need to make a couple more drones. Zero workers, by the way, were killed so far uh, by that uh, that oracle. So the oracle hasn't really been uh, hasn't really been able to get too much done. But now with this like set of shield batteries, eventually Optic Boreas is going to be able to start mining a little bit more. Phenomena, though, is certainly going to lose a couple of these overlords. I mean, at least that's what he's anticipating, judging by the fact that he's producing three more right now. But luckily for him, Phoenix is sleeping on the job, and it's not quite getting anything done just yet. All right, so where is Zerg gonna take this right now? He's done, uh, or he's done a lot of damage here in the early game, but truth be told, his follow-up was not particularly good, right? He fell into the trap where he's like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead, he's microing that Phoenix really hard, by the way, but I'm gonna go ahead and just simply continue headbutting and hope I can win the game right here, right now. He did kill 11 workers, which is nice and all, but Optic Boreas did go ahead and continue that pro production as well. Still does have a lot of Chrono Boost. Oh, man. I always want to see the Chrono Boost spent. It's one of those hallmarks of good players, usually. If you get your Chrono Boost spent and you spend your resources well, usually you will find yourself in a much, much better spot. Regardless, second Spore Crawler here is going to finish up, and that should, at the very least, chew away these couple of air units here for the time being. Is he going to continue making more? There's another Phoenix now joining in as well. I wouldn't mind seeing more Phoenix production, actually. I think Phoenixes are really, really good. They allow you to tank a lot of damage. They're actually surprisingly beefy units. And obviously, you can lift up basically everything. As long as you keep track of whether or not Zerk is trying to expand, you can get a lot of damage in with those, I guess, laser boys? I mean, what are we going to call them? We need a nickname for Phoenixes. Let me know down below. I, I'm open to suggestions, okay? We got laser giraffes, we got, you know, shieldy boys. We got a lot of great unit names. What about phoenixes? Because they are becoming, well, I guess they always have been, but they are becoming very, very common um, once again in StarCraft. They had a little bit of a downturn. There were uh, a lot of Archon openers and whatnot in ZVP for a little while, but phoenixes definitely still have their place. Well, I don't think they're going to be able to get that much done. Now, if there's one terrible counter to Phoenixes, I, I guess he could go Corruptor, which, which works, but Phoenixes, generally speaking, are considered a counter Mutalisk. This is two base Zerg. I'm only seeing links so far. There's a single Roach right over there, but I mean, uh, is he going to go Mutalisk? Because I'm a little hesitant to see Muta play against Phoenixes. So here's the thing. We'll have to see if he's going to go Mutalisk or, or Corruptors, right? Corruptors don't really make a lot of sense here, though, because what are they going to do? Here's the thing. Phoenixes can move and shoot at the same time. And once you lock onto a target, they can kite backwards for a really, really long amount of time. And since Phoenixes are super fast, Mutas can't really catch up on them. So that means that if you micro correctly, Phoenixes can essentially pick off an infinite amount of Mutas. Now we'll have to pay attention if that is going to be the case. Sometimes we do get... Oh my god, he's killing his own shieldy boy. There was a gap right there on the left, man. I don't think he needed to kill that. But anyways, we'll have to see if this is going to be Muta play. Because I don't think Mutas are going to be that good of an answer. Spire is done right now. Yes. Mutalisk indeed do get queued up. All right, so Optic Boreas basically already has the counter out, right? He already is going for Psionic Storm. He already has a couple of Phoenixes. He actually has a pretty healthy amount right now, which I really like. The only downside of Phoenixes, and um, I guess the same can be said for Mutas, is that they require a lot of babysitting. You can't really go ahead and just use the Phoenixes uh, to fly around like he's doing right now. You really want to try and at the very least pick up a couple units here and there. I mean... It scouted the third base, which is nice and all, 
But you're not really going to be able to get that much done if you don't try and at the very least pick up maybe an overlord. And there we go. He's finally once again hunting for those. Or maybe even a couple of workers. Forcing out more spore crawlers is actually really critical too, but they are a high APM unit. So they are a unit that rewards someone who's very, very active and very, very skilled with them. I personally have lost many games on the ladder. For those of you that watch the live stream, you know that I've been losing a lot of games to heavy Phoenix users, especially uh, Rotterdam. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Rotterdam. He loves his Phoenix openers and he does go for the quick upgrades as well. Now, this is nice. Look at that. The drone transfer, man. He's like, okay, there you go. He's like feeding them right now to those Phoenixes. But uh, I always do struggle against these kind of uh, kind of units quite a bit. Because Phoenixes, they are very tough to deal with. I think Corruptors are a really good option. You can even go ahead and build Infester as well. But Muta certainly aren't the way to go. You can try and headbutt with the Phoenixes. I mean, if the Phoenixes, like, hang still in the sky, right? And they fight these Muta straight up. They should actually go down. But as long as he micros them backwards and he just simply kites... Uh, with the direction that the Mutas are moving into as well. You should be able to pick a lot of them up for basically free, and that's really nice. Now, I've got a feeling there's not going to be a lot of drone pickups over here anymore, but that was a nice little bit of damage, and here we go. He's, he's looking to, at the very least, get a bit of a fight going, but this is what I mean, right? The glide and shoot at the same time. We already see the Fleet Beacon right now as a follow-up as well here for our Platinum League Protoss. So he does plan right now on transitioning, I think, towards, well, I hope towards uh, the uh, the ranged upgrade for the Phoenixes. It could be for Carriers, could be for Tempest, could be for a Mothership, but I really do feel like the ranged upgrade for Phoenixes is the way to go. Come on, there we go. All right, very nice. Uh, the, what's it called? The Pulse Crystals upgrade? Something along those lines. Basically, that adds an additional ranged to all of those attacks that Phoenixes do, and since they already can kite really nicely against Mutas, you can actually deal a tremendous amount of damage if you have a little bit more range, because the Mutas technically on paper, right, should not be able uh, should not be able to even touch the Phoenixes here in the first place. All right, we'll see where this is going though. Phenomeno feeling a little brave, moving across the map. Now, there are a couple Archons here as well, but the Mutas did manage to get across completely unscouted. Phoenix is currently preoccupied on the other side of the map. Zerklings, once again, going through the now massive wall that for some reason Optic Boreas decided to create. At the same time, the Mutas swoop in and they are going to go after the pylons of all things? All right. I guess they're going to be able to get a couple of those picked off. He's going to be able to eventually supply block these Protoss, but I really do think you need to go after as many of those probes as you possibly can. Fighting Archons, by the way, also a terrible idea. But here we go. This is this this is that micro that I was talking about, right? If you do it well, you can micro these Mutas for days, but you do need to spend a lot of attention on it, and I think that flying away with your Phoenixes is not the way to go. Now, a lot of these buildings are currently unpowered, and actually the Mutas are starting to deal some serious damage here, picking up a lot more of those workers as well. Here come the Phoenixes once more. The ranged upgrade on them is done, so they're at the very least going to be able to continue some of that aggression. And with good control, right? Look at the range. Look at the little pink beams here. They should be able to pick up all of those Mutas with ease. Just don't overextend and just micro backwards. There you go. That's the way to do it. That is really nicely done. And the Mutas obviously are going to be able to deal some damage here as the Phoenixes hang still. That's the only thing you can't do. You need to keep them, like, moving, right? As soon as the Mutas move, they have a little bit of acceleration. Um, if you can move right around the same time as the Mutas do, you can do it really nicely. And you shouldn't be able to lose that many Phoenixes. Now, truth be told, five Phoenixes for 14 Mutas is still a healthy amount. But there's a lot more Mutas being produced than there are Phoenixes right now. I don't even think a second Stargate is a bad idea against this. Maybe even going for a third Stargate. Love the addition right now of the Archon on the ground, though. That's always a really nice thing to have. Because Archons, obviously, they deal splash damage in a short little radius. And it allows them to connect really nicely with clumped up units especially like for example mutas storm is by the way also done so sonic storm obviously is also phenomenal but at the very least for now that third base still lives at only a couple of hit points but it does start regenerating some shields right now as well Phenomino, though, really focused on the Muta play, right? He's now getting a Bailing Nest as well so he's going Mutaling Bane in this, uh, in this particular match <sighs> I've got a feeling that if he wants to advance into Diamond League, this is the kind of thing that doesn't really work, man. But uh, I guess if you can swoop in right now and just simply go after the base, it deals a ridiculous amount of damage. That is a very healthy amount of Mutas, 30 of them in total. The army is trying to make their way over here once again, but even the splash damage right there of the little bounces of those Mutai Glaives ended up killing the pylon that was powering the Stargate. And that means that once again, these units are going to be able to get on out of here. You know what? I, I <sighs> This is a little frustrating for me to watch. 
The, these phoenixes should be able to kill these mutas with ease, but it looks like Optic Boreas is giving them way more respect than they deserve. Mutas are great, but at some point they can't fight the army anymore, and I think that's kind of the moment that we've actually arrived at. So it's key right now for Zerk to go ahead and counterattack. Don't fight the army, simply counterattack. That's the way to go. Phoenixes are left at home, which is really, really nice. The rest of the Protoss army is moving across. Now, obviously, that's a very APM-intensive move. I don't think you can fight these Archons, man. I've seen a lot of Mutas die to Archons in the past. Please don't do it to me. Don't do it to me, Phenomena. No, no, no. Don't do it. Don't do it to me. Don't, fly away. Fly away, man. Flap your little wings. You got so much to live for. <sighs> All right. Well, at the very least, they did so. But once again, the Phoenixes are not really getting their value. There's also no Archons or whatever left at home. So that does mean that these, uh, well, <laughs> that is the exact opposite how you want to micro that man. What was that? He just microed them into the mutas. Yeah, that's that's a bad idea. So we find ourselves, oh, this is actually going to be real close. We find ourselves in a really sick base race scenario. Here's the thing. These mutas on paper should be able to kill all of the proto structures before the protos can kill all of the zerg structures. Obviously, that's the old school win condition. Now, that's a stupid amount of overlords being picked off. Phenomeno is not going to be able to really continue making anything here. So these mutas are going to be what he has to deal with right now. He's going for additional bases, it looks like, which is really, really critical. Optic Boreas, though, right now, he has not revealed, or he has been revealed because he has not rebuilt his Nexus. He does still have a bunch of resources in the bank right now, and another Nexus will be coming up over here. Uh, that one should be relatively easy to spot, but he can guard this one really nicely, obviously, with the Archons. Still, though, there's more and more mining right now for Phenomeno. Only a couple of probes remain. Mutas still going after as many of those structures as possible. That one Phoenix apparently has a bit of a death wish as well, but apparently its wish is not granted as the Mutas completely fly by. So, Phenomeno knows his opponent uh, once again built something, right? He knows there's once again something that has been built because the revelation that was previously for Protoss um, or, or for Zerg Rotter, it, it has been removed. And that means a Nexus has been planted down. I think this Creep Tumor maybe uh, enough to right here scout what's going on as well. They do end up finding the Nexus here and it does get cancelled. This does mean though, yeah, there's still 400 resources left in the bank here for Optic Boreas. He's going to be able to at the very least build one more Nexus. I've kind of got a feeling, though, he's in a rough spot because look at the amount of hatcheries that are going down right now. The amount of hatcheries that are coming up here, um, they're going to run this Protoss player all over the map. Now, I kind of like this. Okay, Optic Boreas accepting his fate. He's like, you know what? I know you're not going to be able to find this Nexus very easily. It's not even near a bunch of minerals. So you're going to have a really hard time dealing with this right now. Still, though, the Mutas are picking up as many of those structures as they possibly can. And in the long run, it should be the Zerg player here who gets into a really good spot, right? Protoss army still hunting all over the map. Interestingly enough, both people uh, took a, a hidden base right next to each other. <laughs> Luckily here for them, they have no idea that this is happening. So that's going to make it a little bit trickier. But um, these hatcheries, though, they are going down all over the place. And keep in mind, neither player has really produced anything in a long while. And that was not a cancel. So Optic Boreas is actually going to be in a lot of trouble. He cannot... Does he have any drones, actually? I mean, he's making overlords right now. No, I don't think there's a single drone remaining. So there's not going to be any additional production right now here for Zerk anymore either. Protoss is not going to be able to do very much either. I mean, there's one probe right here ready to do long distance mining but the thing is Phenomeno does not know where that last nexus is located he knows there's a nexus somewhere and he knows he's on a timer he doesn't know how much obviously Protoss still has but this all comes down right now to who can find the other players bases first in a straight up fight these Archons should be in a really good no. back off dude back off in a straight up fight these Archons should be in a phenomenal spot these Archons are just gonna- No, 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 don't even try! Don't even think about it! No, 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 no! This- That doesn't work! I've tried it, man! I've made the mistake as well! I've made the- Oh my god! Why would you do that? Why would you do that? <laughs> no! Why would you do that? All you had to do was find the Nexus and kill it! There was no way to lose the game! I mean, obviously, we uh, we know everything, right? We can see the full game, and we can see the amount of resources that both players are gathering. Um, really, the only way you could lose that was by losing all of the mutas. Oh, my God. Well, it turns out 
what was meant to be a, a fun video is now educational instead. It turns out Archons are pretty good against Mutalisk. <sighs> well, if you spread your mutas out really well, right, and you use the technique called magic boxing, you can like spread out your mutas really nicely and, and get usually some decent traits. But even then, mutas have a tendency to clump up and with Archons dealing splash damage in a really small radius, they just pick them off for free. <sighs> My little Zerg heart, man. That hurt. That just simply hurt to watch. How many mutas was that? Way too many to go down to like four Archons. They killed one, right? Maybe they killed more. I'm not entirely sure. All I could see was, you know, I, it was just foggy through all of the Zerg tears that I had in my eyes. Okay, I have no idea what happened. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you get notifications as soon as I upload more. A special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much for all of your generosity and for supporting the channel directly. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile alright. And I will see you once again in the next one.